Fat grafting is not always successful. Um, grafting fat is a transfer essentially of live cells that need to survive in their new environment in order to effectively work or go through appropriate graft take. So no, that doesn't always work and sometimes more than one application is required. Um, fat grafts themselves can go through resorption um, in other words, dye, which is in essence one of the risks of the procedure requiring additional treatment. There can be, like any other surgical treatment procedure, there can be infections at the surgical site. There can be disruptions of some of the nerves in that area. If you're working in an area close to, uh, to motor nerves that uh, uh, affect the movement of the face, and often when that happens, it's temporary, but in certain cases, it could be permanent. There can also be a prolonged uh, bruising or the creation of a hematoma or blood clot in that area. However, typically that's reduced by the use of uh, blunt-tipped cannulas. So the vessels tend to bounce off the tip of that smooth, sort of rounded end of the cannula. One of the other things that occasionally can happen, uh, which are probably some of the bigger risks but are exceptionally rare, are damage to the abdominal wall or some internal organ through the harvesting procedure itself. Uh, these are risks that are similar to liposuction when a patient is to go through a procedure like that for body contouring the risks would be similar and, are, again, are quite rare. Also, during the introduction of fat around an organ, let's say in, in the eyelid area around an eye, there could also be and always the rare, rare risk uh, of damage to the, the globe of the eye. However, when people are doing injections around those areas, typically they're using shields to protect the eye during that process. Uh, other more concerning complications that can also happen uh, during a fat grafting procedure, but again are so exceptionally rare, would be, as we said, the intravascular injection of fat or a fat embolus. This is typically avoided with the use of blunt tip cannulas, but should that happen, that fat cells in injected intravascularly could travel to areas of the body and block off blood supply to a critical area of skin, causing necrosis or death of the skin in that region, or even transfer to an area that's critically supplying an organ. For example, traveling along and blocking blood supply to, let's say, an, an eye causing blindness. But again, these risks are very, very low and are very, very uncommon in experienced hands.